Hey guys, Cassie Deputy with Deputy Tribe, and today we are going to be discussing how to keep your homeschool within two to four hours during the day and still fit everything in. So let's talk about that right after this. back to Deputy Tribe. If you're new here, I'm Cassie Deputy and I am a home educating mama to eight kids. And today I would like to discuss with you a little bit about how we keep our homeschool um, with all eight of our kids, all the subjects within two to four hours during the day. Um, so I have some example clips that I may be putting in here little by little, um, but I'm basically just going to talk through what our mornings up until lunch look like. Um, so me and my oldest four, so ages nine to 12, my oldest four, um, we wake up at about 6 a.m. with my husband and all of us get coffee and we all sit in the living room and we all do our Bible reading together. Um, so I've already trained my big kids on how to have a devotional life and what to do. So they just get up, they read ahead for either Sunday church or Thursday church. They take notes, they write in their prayer journals, they read their um, Oswald Chambers devotional. They do something along those lines um, until about seven. And then at about seven, we all pray together and then we start chores. At around seven, we all go do our morning chores. So my bigs get dressed, make their beds, brush their teeth, brush their hair, clean up their rooms. Then they head outside and take care of the animals. So as I was saying, they do their farm chores. Um, so each kid's kind of in charge of an animal. So Haven does the chickens. So she goes outside and she feeds and waters the chickens. Um, Alicia and Elias take care of the goats and the cows. So they make sure they have hay, they water them. Um, sometimes they'll have to lay down fresh straw and stuff because it's winter. So we kind of have them in a little bit of a confined area um, so that they can stay warm. And then Ahava's in charge of the rabbits. So she feeds and waters the rabbits. Um, they've been busting out of their cages for a while now, so she usually has to spend some time rounding them up. So they go out and do that. While they're doing that, I'm making breakfast, and usually we do oatmeal, and oats need to be fermented and soaked before you eat them. So the night before, I'll either put all the oatmeal in a pot with water and apple cider vinegar and just leave that overnight, or I'll put oatmeal into individual jars with some raw milk, maybe some jelly or honey, some peanut butter, some dried fruits, some nuts, some spices, whatever. And then they'll sit in the fridge overnight like that. And then I'll pop them in the oven in the morning. So let me show you that. So that's what I did last night. So here they are in the oven, warming up, baking. Um, and then they're still outside taking care of the animals. So I start some bread and it's sourdough bread so it takes a few days or it takes at least a day. So I'll prep this, bake it tonight and then we'll have enough for the next two days. And then on that second day I'll bake more. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So then it's about 8.30 right now. So at roughly nine, we'll sit down and eat and do our group school routine, which I can walk you through next. So they um, go into their room, they do their chores, um, and then they 
you know, make their beds, get dressed. Um, they check their jurisdiction. So if it's a laundry person, they'll switch the loads of laundry. If it's a bathroom person, maybe they'll pick up or wipe down the bathroom. If it's a dish person, they'll unload the dishwasher. They'll do that kind of stuff. Well, at roughly 8.30ish, um, 8, 8.30ish, they're done. And meanwhile, I'm getting dressed. I'm making breakfast. I'm getting the littles up. I'm getting them dressed, having them pick up their rooms, make up their beds and those types of things. <clears throat> so then we all get together around 8.30, 9 o'clock. And we eat breakfast together and we pray. And then we... Um, do a read aloud. So right now we're reading through a lamplighter book. So these, if you're not familiar with lamplighter, link below. But basically it's a ministry out of New York and they take old books from like the 1800s and 1900s that were very based in biblical principles with great morals, great stories, um, that old style of writing um, and put them to new publishing. They also have a whole school of the arts um, that's gospel centered and lots of cool things. So right now we're reading one of those. Sometimes we read books in French and we'll read them over and over and over and over like kids books so that we can really pick up the vocabulary and memorize the story. And then we'll flip to a biography like a YWAM publishing book and read about a historical person. Um, those are kind of the three that we kind of flip between and then we'll go to another lamplighter and we'll just kind of rotate changing up the genres. Maybe we'll get into The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings or something along those lines together as a family. So we do our read aloud. Um, it I usually only read one chapter, sometimes two chapters. So usually 30 minutes to an hour maybe of reading. Um, usually around 30 minutes. And then we watch something called World Watch News. If you don't know what that is, I'll include the link below, but it's a 10 minute news clip every weekday that they put together. Um, it's a Christian based organization that presents world events with the perspective of a Bible believing Christian for kids. So they have segments on um, history and science and current events and world events and technology. And um, I mean, they teach about cryptocurrency. They teach about alligators they teach about what's going on in russia and ukraine they talk about all sorts of things the history of martin luther king day like they it's it's really high quality 10 minute clips every weekday <clears throat> so we watch that we discuss it a little bit and then we may do a couple um french songs where we take a couple french worship songs and we're memorizing the words and so we may listen to a couple of those songs and by the time all of this is over, it's been 45 minutes to an hour, maybe. So then everybody cleans up and we head to the table for school. Now we do a four day school week. So we do, depending, right now I'm going to therapy for a brain injury that I had. So Thursdays, I usually do school, but we haven't for all the last four months because I've been in therapy. And Mondays we don't do school because that's our family Sabbath day. So we do school Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday is typically how it plays out depending on what our Saturday looks like. So two of those days we do math and handwriting. Two of those days we do language and grammar. Um, so we do all of the old one room schoolhouse books is how we do it, um, which can be other videos later or you can subscribe to my channel and I talk a lot about how we use the McGuffey's, the Ray's Arithmetic books, the, um, I forget what the grammar one is, Harvey's Grammar or something like that, and the Spencerian um, handwriting books, which is like J John Hancock, John Hancock, that signed the Declaration of Independence. That style of handwriting is what we have endeavored to learn this year. So I basically do a short lesson with each of the kids. Um, the math for my youngest, one so this one back here is the youngest doing math so her how old are you evie four four arye six and elias is nine and their math is primarily oral so we just sit down and we go through the lesson orally and then every once in a while like right now she's learning um number so we have been working for the last month on numbers zero to a hundred and understanding the concept of what 87 means. 
So now she can count to 100 and figure out what 10 comes next because we've worked it so many times where the nine house is full, it becomes a 10 and moves to the tens house. And so she's completing it by building me and showing me what happens to make 100. 99. So now one more unit wants to move in. Your units are right there. We're going to add one more to 99. Let's see what's going to happen here. <gasps> he can't move in. So what happens? They have to all have to move. They have to become a 10 block. Uh-oh, but our 10's house is full. So now what happens? Uh, they, have to move to they have to all turn into a 100 and move here. What? So get all your 10's off. Like place value. So we'll build things out and we'll you know, going through one from a hundred so she really grasps that concept. And I'll spend 10, 15 minutes with her. We do that for a few minutes and then she reads to me out of her beginner's reader for a few minutes and then we're done. And so same with Duke. With Arye, he'll go through his math with me for about 15 minutes and we're done. And Elias about 15, 20 minutes and we're done. <clears throat> and then we'll move to handwriting. And so this Spencerian handwriting is very much teaching the art of handwriting. So it's very, very, very slow progression. So right now we're literally just doing diagonal lines over and over till they perfectly match the previous ones, just so that you get the muscle memory, how you sit, how you hold your pencil, and just practicing these lines. Then it's curved lines. Then it's like, you know, so it's very, very just, and you can see how I can get all the kids done, boom, 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 and then I, you know, do one lesson with them and then they go and they do a few practice problems and then, um, and then I work with the next kid and then when they're finished, they show me their work. Um, if you are doing the math, then we will kind of have the kids who are in the same level correct each other's by like saying what they got and if they got it wrong, they all redo it and they figure out what the right answer is. Or I'll go back with the ones um, that like, aren't doing math with other people like Elias and stuff <clears throat> and I'll you know correct it with them but the whole goal is you take it really really slow and it's quality over quantity is my goal so Duke is memorizing his addition facts in the twos right now and he's gonna do them over and over and over and over until he can count by twos forwards backwards starting at one starting at two starting at six starting at nine and he can tell me two plus three like that and two plus seven like that. So we're doing that over and over and over until he's mastered it. And then we're going to move to the threes and the fours. And so that's the approach that we take. Um, and we have found that it is extremely beneficial to do it this way because they, when they get to multiplication or more advanced math concepts, they understand their multiplication facts so well that everything else is just, it's the same stuff over and over. You just gotta lay that strong foundation. So with the McGuffey readers now, is I'll read a story with them one day and we'll answer the questions and discuss it. Um, and then maybe they'll copy the words. So again, you can find all of this in other videos on my website or on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> and, then, and then we'll do a grammar lesson. And the grammar lesson typically takes 15 minutes, 20 minutes. We just open the grammar book I write the stuff on the board, we talk about it, they do the practice things, and then we're done. So we talked about declarative sentences and interrogative sentences, and they took some random words and they made their own sentences, and I require pristine handwriting. Um, so I want their notebooks that they work in to be ones that they wanna go back and look at. So I encourage really, really, really good handwriting. I would rather they did three sentences with their best handwriting than 20 sentences of sloppy work. So um, so they do that. And then by 11.45, we're pretty much finished with school. So I'm making lunch while they're starting their music practices. <coughs> so my kids play um, cello, violin, guitar, classical guitar, and piano. Um, and they take lessons for those. Some of them take all four, some of them take three, two, one, whatever. 
So they start their checklists and their practices right away after that. And then they have lessons scattered throughout the afternoon online through Practice Monkeys. And if you don't know what Practice Monkeys is, I'll include that link down below also. So they get 15 minute, well, not all of them, but some of them have 15 minute long lessons four days a week. Some of them who are in the higher levels have a little bit longer lessons, um, but we pay one price for the entire family to attend these lessons um, per instrument. So that is very feasible. We don't have to drive anywhere and they get those lessons four days a week, which is amazing. So that, and then by noon we're done with all of our formal school and they spend the rest of the afternoon doing music or working on some sort of skill set. So I'm a huge proponent of building your children up with actual practical life skills. So they might cook dinner for me, they might bake something, they might knit, they might crochet, they might sew, they might go take care of their animals, they might pull out some reference books and study their animals because they're each in charge of like a specific animal. So they may pull out all the chicken books we have and research like why are chickens pulling each other's feathers out. Turns out we have too many roosters, so we need to slaughter the roosters, you know. So that's kind of what our afternoon is. My boys sometimes get into these modes where they want to um, build. So all the toys that I have in our house are very open-ended toys. We don't have a lot of toys at all. Maybe I'll give you guys a tour of my toys and how I pick toys and stuff, but they're very much toys that require imagination on the end of the child. So I have like these plank blocks. I have like big wood blocks. I have um, Lincoln logs. I have um, a wood dollhouse with little wood people and wood furniture. Um, those types of toys. I have like magnets so they can build things out of magnets. I have coloring books. I have like wood tablets with letters that they can trace. So I have those types of toys. So sometimes in the afternoon, my boys just want to build with Legos and they build this whole city with Legos and they play for hours or they pull out board games and they sit and play board games in the afternoon or they take their blocks and their Lincoln logs and they make streets and houses and, and do that type of thing. <clears throat> or they, uh, like around Christmas time, they got really excited about Christmas music and so they printed a bunch of music and they just spent all afternoon practicing Christmas music. Um, or they work on like bead art or um, one of my girls got a sewing machine so she's been making pillows out of all sorts of scrap pieces of clothing. She wants to like make those rugs where you roll old pieces of cloth and make rugs and stuff. So that's what our afternoon consists of. And then um, we do not allow electronics really throughout the school week at all. So we don't watch shows with the kids. They don't play video games. They don't get tablets. The only exception is audiobooks. They're allowed to listen to audiobooks and listen to music and um, do things like that. But we nix the electronics because then they know that there's not going to be any and they're more drawn to reading books. My kids read a tremendous amount of books. So that is something that they really covet their downtime to do is to read. So, and then we do chores again in the evening around dinner time. We do the animals before the sun sets. We do all of the housework, all of the laundry, dishes, bathroom, dining room, living room and then all the animals need to get fed and watered and checked on again in the evening. So that is how we fit it all in <coughs> in a couple hours. So I said I was gonna go through our morning routine and I, tend, I, I went through our whole day. But um, the biggest things is, the most important things come first. So time with the Lord is first. Um, in the evening is when my little kids do their devotions with their dad. So he leads that part. He reads to them, they talk things through. He goes over their CKC books, which is kind of like a wanna, where you have a study and a verse that you memorize. So he does that with them in the evenings before they go to bed. So they're still getting that time with him. And then all of our kids, when they get to reading age, read through a beginner's Bible from cover to cover. And then as they get older, they read through their Bible. Um, they do like a reading in the year plan at some point before they become young adults at like 12 or 13. They have read through their entire Bible several times. So um, what's most important comes first. That's key. Less is more. 
Um, we've tried many schedules over the years and what I have found most effective is a block scheduling type of thing where you say, you know what, we're just doing math for 45 minutes and it's a big, long chunk of time so they can get in the groove. They can, you know, struggle through things. You have the time to invest in that subject. And then if we finish that subject, then we'll move to this subject, but we don't try to squeeze all four, five, six, seven, eight subjects into a day. Now you may be wondering, well, what about history? What about science? What about health? What about geography? What about all these things, right? And I wanna tell you something. If you're reading out loud to your kids books and you're going through those McGuffey readers, you literally do not even have to worry about those subjects because between watching World Watch News, reading books out loud together, having discussions, looking at maps, um, we have like this book that's a history timeline. It goes from like 4000 BC or something like that all the way to current. And so when we read books, especially our biographies, we will print pictures of what we read and we'll put it in our timeline. So we're getting a good grasp of historically what happened when. We're getting exposure to all sorts of different types of writing. Um, we're learning about things in those 10 minute clips every day. And then we're also in those McGuffey readers. They hit every single subject you could possibly imagine, um, all from a biblical, moral point of view. So just the other day, we learned all about bears. And I mean, stuff I had no idea about. And then we'll have a passage in the Bible. And then we'll have a famous poem by Henry Longfellow. And then um, then we'll, you know, read an article about Rush Revere or Paul Revere. Rush Revere. Paul Revere. Um so it just incorporates itself. Sometimes we read an entire reference book on bugs together and we learn all about bugs. Sometimes we read, one time we were so interested in uh, microbiology that we read a bunch of books on viruses and germs and the human body and how illness is spread and that's what we did for our read aloud. Um, and so it's, it's really fun, it's really easy, it's really not hard to give your children a really, really, really good education in two to four hours a day. Really not that hard. Um, and then remembering what's most important, which is their walks with the Lord and their character. So chores, housework, discipline, and waking up, getting done what you need to get done, working hard, taking care of everything, attending to your studies well, um, and then when you have leisure time, making even your leisure time constructive is an important thing that we want to portray to our children. So I hope that encourages you that you can homeschool and you can do it in two to four hours. Hey, if you guys have any questions, just leave your questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. Um, if you have any other ideas or, or like, hey, can you make a video about this specifically? I would love to know with your guys' feedback down below. Give this video a thumbs up, please like it share it with everybody, and um, remember that Jesus is coming. Thanks, guys.